नाम है मीना एंड यू आर वॉचिंग रानी की जबानी एंड टूडे वर बैक विद अनदर रियली फन स्टोरी फॉर यू बाय जूलिया डोनल्डसन जूलिया डोनल्डसन ये कहानी लिखी और इसकी तस्वीरें लिडिया मंक्स ने बनाई इस कहानी का नाम है द प्रिंसेस एंड द विजर्ड यानी के शहजादी और जादूगर अच्छा जादूगर नहीं है इट्स अ वाइली ट्रिक्सटर going to do some naughty things but we will find out the end me jeet ki ski ho gaya so this is the princess and the wizard it was princess eliza's birthday she was just blowing out the seven candles on her cake when a wicked wizard flew down the chimney and into the room why didn't you invite me to your party he thundered because wicked wizards like turning people into stone replied princess eliza So they do," said the wizard, and with a flick of his bony fingers, he turned the king, the queen, and all the party guests into stone. Then he laughed a horrible laugh and said to Princess Eliza, "They like capturing princesses too." Just then, there was a whirring of wings, and in through the window flew the princess's fairy godmother. Phew. She was late for the party. When she saw what had happened, she waved her wand and said, "The princess may try seven times to escape by changing her color and changing her shape." The wizard just laughed his horrible laugh and said, "Changing her color and changing her shape will never help Princess Eliza escape." Then he snapped his bony fingers again and turned the fairy godmother. into stone the wizard whisked the princess up the chimney and carried her away to his tall dark castle he locked her into the cellar where she cried herself to sleep cellar na godam hota hai the basement horrible hai chuhe phir rahe ho na andhera tha yuck the next day was monday the wizard unlocked the cellar door he was holding the big red book which contained all his magic see you can see it here ग्रेट बुक ऑल हिज स्पेल्स इन सारी जादू की चीजें उसके दाम में लिखी हुई थी दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट चांस टू एस्केप ही सेड आई शैल काउंट टू 100 एंड देन आई शैल कम एंड फाइंड यू ही ओपनड हिज बुक क्लोज्ड हिज आईज एंड बिगन टू काउंट प्रिंसेस एलाइजा रन आउटसाइड द मोट ऑफ द कैसल शॉन ब्लू अंडर द ब्लू स्काई शी जंप्ड इनटू द वाटर एंड टर्न्ड हरसेल्फ इनटू अ ब्लू फिश 98 99 100 the wizard opened his eyes looked in his magic book and read to find where eliza is hiding from you look in the moat for the fish that is blue that's a really nifty book to have for a evil wizard huh he fished eliza out of the moat and took her to his kitchen which is full of blue plates and pots and pans they were all covered in dried up food So you like blue, do you? He said. Then set to work and wash. And he locked her in. No, no, Charlie. Never but then do never. On Tuesday morning, the wizard unlocked the kitchen door. He looked at the clean pots and pans and plates, and he grunted. <laughs> Chance number two, he said. Then he opened his book, closed his eyes, and began to count. Princess Eliza ran to the farmyard. She turned herself into a yellow chick. And hid in some straw. It's a good idea. But the wizard read in his book that straw in the farmyard is yellow and thick. Princess Eliza is disguised as a chick. That was baby Murugi, thi na? Chooza. You know, little chooza Eliza turned into a chooza. But the book betrayed her. He scooped Eliza up and took her to a cupboard which was full of yellow socks. They all had holes in them made by his pointy toenails. So you like yellow, do you? He said. Then set to work and darn. Then he locked her in. Darning socks is rafu karna, so she had to do rafu on all of the mosaic. On Wednesday morning, the wizard unlocked the cupboard door, looked at all the darned socks, and grunted. <laughs> Chance number three, he said, and he opened his book, closed his eyes, and began to count. Princess Eliza ran to the meadow. She changed herself into a green grasshopper and hid among the grass blades. Again, not just an idea, Socha, but 
The wizard read in his book, The grasshopper princess is easily seen, chirping away in the meadow so green. He caught Eliza in a net and took her to his green bathroom. The bath, basin, walls and floor were covered in the wizard's slimy toothpaste. Ooh. So, you like green, do you? he said. Then set to work and wipe. And he locked her in. Three more days went by. Each day the princess tried to escape. On Thursday, she turned herself into an orange fox and hid in a pile of orange leaves. On Friday, she turned herself into a purple butterfly and fluttered among some purple flowers. On Saturday, she turned herself into a black cat and lurked in a black tunnel. But each time, the wizard found her and gave her yet more work to do. In spite of the fact that she was so calm and she was trying to run away from the wizard. On Sunday morning, the wizard came onto the roof where Eliza had been scrubbing the sooty chimney pots. Instead of grunting, he laughed his horrible laugh. <laughs> this is your last chance, he said. If I catch you this time, you must stay and work for me for the rest of your life. <sighs> Then he opened his book, closed his eyes, and began to count. Princess Eliza turned herself into a white gull and flew up into a cloud. But as she hovered above the roof, where the wizard was still counting, she saw words forming upon the page of his open book. So that's how he finds me, she cried. I shall never escape. But then she had an idea. She turned herself into a page of the wizard's book. A perfectly blank white page with no writing on it. 98, 99, a hundred. The wizard finished counting and began to read his book. The princess turned into a bird in the sky. She hid in a cloud. Then she had one more try. That was the end of the page. The wizard turned over to read more, but there was no more. The next page of his book was blank and white. He flew into a rage. You stupid book, he shouted, and he hurled it into the moat. The book landed with a splash and sank to the bottom. All the wizard's magic was gone. At that moment, in the palace, the king and the queen and all the party guests came back to life. Where is Princess Eliza? They asked each other. Nobody knew except the fairy godmother and she only smiled, said nothing. Princess Eliza had turned herself from a white page into a blue fish and swimming to the edge of the moat, she turned herself into a yellow chick and ran across the corn in the farmyard. She turned herself into a green grasshopper and hopped over the grass. She turned herself into an orange fox and raced through the orange leaves. She turned herself into a purple butterfly and fluttered over the purple flowers. She turned herself into a black cat and streaked through the black tunnel. Then she turned herself into a white bird and flew all the way back to the palace and in through the window. She perched on a chair at the tea table and changed herself back into a princess. The king and queen and all the party guests hugged her. Then Princess Eliza cut her birthday cake and everyone had a slice. Wasn't she so smart? Didn't she have such an amazing idea? She had so much of a mind and she had so much of a mind and she had so much of a fairy godmother and she had so much of a mind and she had so much of a mind and she had so much of a mind and that's the kind of quick thinking that we all need for our day-to-day lives. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this story as much as I did reading it with you guys and we'll see you next time for Rani Ki Zabani. Bye! मेरा नाम है मीना एंड यू आर वॉचिंग रानी की जुबानी आज हम एक बहुत खास कहानी पढ़ने जा रहे हैं एक बहुत खास हमारी दोस्त ने लिखी है और उसका नाम है मलाला यूसुफ जई एंड दिस इज अ बुक दैट शी रोट कॉल मलाला मैजिक पेंसिल 
बहुत प्यारी कहानी है बहुत मजा आएगा पढ़ के अगर आप भी स्कूल जाते हैं और आपको भी पढ़ाई का शौक है और आप भी चाहते हैं दुनिया बदलना दिस इज द बुक फॉर यू वेन आई वॉज यंग गर्ल आई यूज टू वॉच अ टी वी शो अबाउट अ बॉय हु हैड अ मैजिक पेंसिल इफ ही वॉज हंग्री ही ड्रू अ बोल ऑफ कारी एंड इट अपियर्ड इफ ही एंड इज फ्रेंड्स वर इन डेंजर ही ड्रू अ पुलिस ऑफिसर द बॉय वॉज अ लिटल हीरो ऑलवेज प्रोटेक्टिंग पीपल हु नीडेड हेल्प How I wanted a magic pencil too. If I had a magic pencil, I would use it to put a lock on my door so my brothers couldn't bother me. Stop time so I could sleep an extra hour every morning. Erase the smell of the rubbish dump near my house. And I would use it to make other people happy. I would draw the most beautiful dresses for my mother. or the best buildings in the valley for my father so he could open many schools where children could study for free and i draw a proper ball so my brothers and i no longer had to play with an old sock stuffed with rubbish every night before i went to bed i wished for a magic pencil of my own and every morning i would wake up and check my cupboard but the magic pencil was never there one day i was throwing away potato peelings and egg shells at the dump I was wrinkling my nose and swatting away flies and making sure I didn't step on anything dirty in my nice shoes when I saw a girl about my age sorting rubbish into piles nearby boys were fishing for metal scraps using magnets on string when my father returned home from work I told him what I'd seen it made him sad abba i said yes jani he said back i always liked when he called me dear one Why haven't I seen that girl in my class? Because he said, but he didn't finish right away. Because Jani in our country not everyone sends their daughters to school and some children must work to support their family. Those boys will sell the metal scraps that they find. If they went to school, their families would go hungry. School was my favorite place, but I had never considered myself lucky to go. Sometimes we don't think we're lucky to go to school. My father had always said, "Malala will live free as a bird." Now I wondered how free I truly be. That night, I thought about families who didn't have enough food and the girl who couldn't go to school, and even about how when I was older, I would be expected to cook and clean for my brothers because where I came from, many girls weren't allowed to become what they had dreamed of. I knew then that if I had a magic pencil, I would use it to draw a better world. a peaceful world first i would erase war poverty and hunger then i would draw girls and boys together as equals over the next few years instead of wishing for a magic pencil every night i worked hard in school every day i wanted to be one of the top students in my class but soon powerful and dangerous men declared that girls were forbidden from attending school They walked the streets of our city now. They carried weapons. One by one, girls stopped coming to school. "Abba, where are all the students?" I asked my father. "They don't feel safe here anymore, Jani," he said. "How could a few men stop all the girls in our valley from going to school? If more people knew what was happening to us, I thought they might help." Wishing wasn't enough. Someone needed to speak out. Why not me? I wrote about what it felt like to be scared to walk to school and how some of my friends had moved away because of the threat they faced in our city. I wrote about how much I loved school and how proud I was of my uniform. Once I started writing, I didn't stop. I wrote speeches and traveled around my country sharing my story. I even talked to a reporter from a famous international newspaper. People actually wanted to learn about my life. I spoke for all the girls in my valley who couldn't speak for themselves. My voice became so powerful that the dangerous men tried to silence me. But they failed. And now my voice is louder than ever. Louder because people have joined me and together we make a chorus standing up for what we believe in. We raise our voices. for those in need we help people in danger even if they are an ocean away we think of the world as a family
Do you still believe in magic? I do. I wrote alone in my room, but people all over the world were reading my stories. Millions now know it and help me spread my message of hope. I had at last found the magic I was looking for in my words and in my work. I am Malala. I've always wished I could make the world a more peaceful place and every day I work to make my dream come true. So in the end, Malala's magic pencil was the pencil that wrote all of those wonderful words that connect her and connect us and connect all of us together in this wonderful quest that we all have to try and make the world a better place and to think of the world as a family. Because if we don't give each other, then how will the world change? Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a lot of fun reading this story, Malala's story. And we'll see you next time.
बादल ऐसा बादल वैसा बादल देखो जादू सर के ऊपर कितनी शक्लें बदले बादल ऐसा बादल वैसा बादल जो तुम देखो वैसा बादल जो तुम देखो वैसा बादल
friends, my name is Rani and today we're going to hear a story by Tom Percival called Dream Big Little Mole. Now let's go underground into the world of Little Mole. Up on a hillside early one morning, a mole sniffed the air as a new day was dawning. She gazed at the birds as they soared through the sky and wished in her heart that she could fly high. She watched as the ducks splashed along in the water, but Mole couldn't swim because no one had taught her. She saw Grasshopper leap and Squirrel climb high. I wish I could do that, she said with a sigh. Owl heard the mole sigh and flew down from her tree. Just be who you are, said the owl. That's the key. Dream big, little mole. Be brilliant, be you. Then off the owl flapped with a loud twitter too. <laughs> mole tried to dream big, but her thoughts were a blur. Nothing she dreamt up felt quite right for her. Until... Something struck her. She cried, Owl so clever. My skill is to dig the biggest hole ever. She dug deep through the soil, so fast and so keen. Her hole would be bigger than any yet seen. She dug down ever deeper through mud and past rocks and fell through the roof of a flute-playing fox. <gasps> well, thank you, said Fox, although not very kindly. I thought that the worst of this week was behind me. My friend moved away, now I'm here all alone, and to make matters worse, you've just ruined my home. I'm sorry, said Mole. I don't know what to say. But Fox rolled his eyes and just shooed her away. So Mole tunneled on, feeling slightly forlorn, until a voice cried, You've just ruined my lawn! Mole had dug up into somebody's garden. I'm sorry, she said. I do beg your pardon. First, my hose gets a hole, said Hedgehog, distressed. And now Look what you've done! You've made such a mess! Mole repeated, I'm sorry. But there came no reply. So she went on her way with a tear in her eye. Up above ground, Rabbit ran without care. He was watching his kite bob along through the air. Then he tripped on some mud Mole had dug from the ground and his kite flew away without making a sound. Mole watched as his kite floated off drifting free. Then it got tangled high up in a tree. Rabbit started to cry and scurried away. Leaving Mole all alone, this wasn't her day. Poor little Mole had a sad, heavy heart. It seemed her big dream was now falling apart. She had wanted to dig, make the world's best hole. But she'd made people sad, and that wasn't her goal. No more, she exclaimed. I will give up for good. Then a beautiful melody rang through the wood. She followed the tune, digging carefully on, until... She met Otter, who asked what was wrong. When Mole explained, Otter sang, Just keep on going, you will dig your hole. There's no time for slowing. I've practiced a lot to sing clear and true. And practice makes perfect whatever. So Mole dug back down 
till her paws felt all soggy and she noticed the ground was now feeling quite boggy. Oh no! panicked Maul. Her whiskers a quiver. She seemed to have dug through the bank of a river. The water gushed out, flowing faster and faster. Had Little Mole's dream become a disaster? When she popped above ground, Mole was feeling quite tense. Her digging had set off a chain of events. The water gushed out, shooting high up a tree in a powerful jet that set rabbits kite free. In Hedgehog's dry garden, a shower of rain meant everything started to grow once again. From the top of a spout, Fox heard Otter's sweet song. And in no time at all, he was playing along. All the problems were solved and Mole felt so glad. She brought strangers together, they were no longer sad. They laughed as they worked to clear everything up and Mole marveled at what can come out of bad luck. Well, what an adventure, said Owl. In the end, it seems that your talent is helping your friends. The end. I hope you enjoyed the storybook. See you next time.